Can you hear me now? I want to make sure everybody can hear me. Um, is this better? Are you able to hear me? As soon as somebody give me the A-OK -okay that you can hear me, then OK, you can hear me. So let's start this over. I'm sitting in front of the hospital. I'm going to go through this again. And yes, I look a little funny because I was crying. Um, the reason I am still sitting in front of the hospital and I was a little upset is because of the news I received from the doctor. So I'm going to go over everything again because I don't know what you heard, what you didn't hear. Because my last live they were saying they couldn't hear me. But um, when I went to see the doctor just now, they, they did a really in-depth ultrasound. This is my notes. And they looked at all three fibroids. Uh, one is 5.6 centimeters, another is 4.3 centimeters, another is 2.7 centimeters. I have three. I have one on the left side and two on the right side. Uh, my baby is 3.1 pounds, which my doctor made me laugh because she said that um, my, my baby is pretty big for me to be six months. And I'm like, well, I, probably because I've been eating too much. She said, yeah, let's slow down on the eating a little bit. And we kind of laughed that off, which was a good laugh before she gave me the bad news. Um, I'm a little over 27 weeks. And you guys already know that um, I've had a myomectomy done in the past where they removed, took my uterus. They, they cut me on my stomach below, above my pelvic area. They pulled out my uterus, cut the fibroids off my uterus and placed my uterus back in so I can conceive. So now I'm, I'm pregnant. I always felt like, you know, I was given minimum information when I had my myomectomy. I was told after my myomectomy that I would have to have a cesarean. Um, but I had a friend of mine that had a vaginal birth um, after her cesarean. So I was hoping that was the case for me. But when I went to see the doctor today to get a second opinion, because the first doctor said I have to have a cesarean. She didn't explain why, didn't tell me anything. So when I was talking to the doctor today, she said I had something called previa. See, I keep trying not to cry, but I'm going to get through this. So she said, I have something called previa. And previa is when the placenta is blocking the opening for the baby to get out. And the baby can't push through the placenta. So she was saying, I understand you wanted to have a, a myomectomy. I'm sorry, a vaginal birth. But because of your myomectomy, this is most likely the reason why you have previa. And I'm like, no one told me that I had to have a cesarean before I had a myomectomy if I was to have a child. No one told me previa would be a possible complication after a myomectomy. So it's like... Um, I'm finding out. I'm finding out all these different, you know, issues as I'm pregnant. I'm like, why they didn't tell me this before so I can know all my options and know what to do. The reason I wanted a, a vaginal birth is because I felt like with that surgery, it kind of took a part of me and I felt like having a, a vaginal birth would kind of normalize my situation and I wanted to experience what most women experience but I can't do that so the good thing is I have to look at the positive that's what my mom said I just got off the phone with her she said some people can't even have a baby so you gotta look at the blessing and that you're able to have a child, you know, you're able to conceive a child, bring a child to life full term, you know, because there's people that's in worse situations. So you got to look at the blessing in it. And I do. And that's what's going to make me feel better, you know, that she told me that. But it just, I really had my hopes up to have a vaginal birth. And since this previa which I never heard of any of this stuff. 
you know, this is my first baby, so Previa is new to me. You know, a mandatory cesarean is new to me because of the myomectomy. And the reason I'm telling y'all is because you need to be aware of your situation. Like, because fibroids is going to happen to at least 70 to 80% of all women around the world, every culture, especially African American women. So, if you're in a situation where your fibroids is bad, like mine, and trust me, everybody don't have a bad case. Some people fibroids will come and just go away you know but they do cause miscarriages back pain extended menstruals like mine went to 20 days blood clocks coming out mine were the size of my palm um iron level was was terrible hemoglobin was off i was fainting i was losing a lot of blood that was my situation but everybody don't have fibroid situation like mine some people i met have worse worse situations than mine there's a lady, she's been married to her husband for over two, 10 years, and she doesn't have any kids, and they've been trying to conceive, but because of the fibroids, they haven't been able to conceive, and she conceived, and she had several surgeries, so you have to look at, well, I have to look at my situation, and thank God that I'm, I'm still able to have a baby, and it's okay to cry, you know, my mom said that too, it's okay to cry, it's just, I just not getting what I wanted. But as long as the baby is okay, because they checked and they made sure again the baby don't have no type of Down syndrome, no diseases. I don't have preeclampsia. I don't have I don't have any issues. It's just the placenta is blocking to where my baby can't get out. So now the vaginal birth it, it is just off the table. You know, I have another I have another doctor's appointment. Oh, God. All right, I have another doctor's appointment tomorrow, but after hearing this news, it really kind of doesn't matter if she checks uh, where my myomectomy cut was or where my, my previous fibroids were located because I've already been told today that, you know, with Previa, because I'm so far along in my pregnancy, most likely that placenta won't move so my baby can get out. They said, because I'm so far, it's going to probably stay right there. So I have to get cut anyway. And that cut hurts. Ugh. It hurts. But I'm just going to have to push through it. And it's right around the corner. What? Less than three months. I'll be having my baby. So talk something positive. Let's see. I'm having a... um a baby shower at the end of next month or first week in april so that should be nice i'm just trying to change the subject because irritating <laughs> i'll get over it it's just i gotta cry <laughs> and get it out <laughs> but that's my situation i'm gonna get off live and i got this y'all like it'll be all right I'm just upset because I didn't get what I wanted. But you don't always get what you want. It's still a blessing that I'm able to have a baby. So thank you for listening. And that's all I have to say for now. I'll keep you guys updated on everything. All right. Bye-bye.